Lately I've been getting quite skeptical about such a science as geology. The thing is that there is a great variety of different mountains on Earth, and the formation of many of them is fully explained from the point of view of geology. But there are mountain formations, to put it mildly, not quite of natural origin. And it is visible to the naked eye. But scientists still continue to spin the worn-out record that nature created all this. There are a great many mountains on Earth that raise questions for almost everyone who visits them. For example, some of them look like just a pile of concrete mortar. But the view is one thing, and the facts are another. First you need to figure out if it was physically possible to pile up a huge pile of mortar. The answer suggests itself. Yes. If your height is at least 30 meters and above. This is Nha Trang, the capital of Khan Choi province in central Vietnam. Located on the coast of the South China Sea. There is a picturesque cape on which stones of unusual shape and size are piled up. But we are interested in Hong Chong or the Rock Garden. By the way a place popular with romantics. So on one of the huge stones, a huge fingerprint of five fingers is clearly visible. Human fingers. The height of such a person was at least 30 meters. And the most important thing is that the stone was clearly in a plastic state, otherwise the trace would simply not have been imprinted. Plus one to the topic of our video minus one to historians and geologists. Let's continue further. This is a rock in the Crimea. It clearly does not look natural and again it looks like a piece of frozen concrete. And at the first examination our assumptions are confirmed. The prints of huge human fingers are visible on a huge stone. As if the mountain was simply blinded. It's hard to even guess the height of this person. He was just huge. But scientists prefer not to notice this. Where to put the theory of evolution then and explain to millions of people why they were so harshly deceived. So another proof that there were such people and in principle, it was possible for them to pour a solution of such concrete in quotation marks. I will not talk about other proofs of the existence of such people, since I have already made many issues about this. The poet who is on my channel for the first time, watch the issues on the topic. And now, let's continue. This is the Fuer de Samaypada complex, Samaypada fortress, also known as El Fuert, an archaeological monument, and UNESCO World Heritage Site. Located in Bolivia in the Santa Cruz department. At the very top of the mountain there is a clearly cast rock measuring 250 meters in length and 60 in width. There are also ruins of an ancient Inca city at the foot, but I don't think the man-made rock is their handiwork. They're just well established here. The rock itself is covered with numerous petroglyphs, carved geometric figures, and images of animals fish people. And all this was done most likely when the composition of the rock was in a plastic state. On the one hand, one could assume that once upon a time the rocks were in such plastic states from nature. But then the question arises, why make buildings out of them and even then live in them? It's not safe. And anyway, it's hard to imagine that a person's leg and arm easily fell into them, but for some reason they did not spread for hundreds of kilometers. Therefore, I consider it more expedient to assume that it was some kind of solution that subsequently solidified. At the same time, you can recall the Barabar Caves. This small rocky ridge is located in the Indian state of Bayar, northeast of Gaia. 
Its length lies through an absolutely flat, flat terrain and is about 3 kilometers. By the way, this is also quite strange, but still the biggest mystery is this ridge itself, and in particular its caves. This rocky ridge is called the Barabar Caves after the name of an ancient Indian monastery located in the same rocks. This is a complex of four caves. Look at this photo. Doesn't it seem to you that it was poured out like a concrete solution and then, as it solidified, the caves were bailed out? I want to immediately threaten skeptics that this assumption is not without foundation. Visvajapri, Visvajapri, Visvajapri is the fourth cave from the Barabar complex. It is not of particular interest, since it is not just unfinished, but rather just begun. The photo shows that the rock was in a plastic state when it was processed. Here we see that the floor was clearly in a living condition. And if there was a floor in a living condition, as well as walls, then the whole mountain range is completely man-made. Just imagine the technology to cast a whole mountain range. And these are incredible rocks called the Three Whales, located in Thailand in the province of Buen Can. These are perfectly polished, three rocks located next to each other, which exactly resemble the Barabar Caves. The casting method was apparently the same. And these are the Bayanal Mountains. Bayanal is located on the left coast of the Erdish, west of Pavlogar. Its territory is 50,688 hectares. It is also quite obvious that the mountains are of artificial origin. Look, granite flowed in layers. For thousands, maybe millions of years, the official age in geology, the massifs have not even been covered with turf from vegetation and weathering products. And in this photo, we can observe a completely flat wall, poured in layers. Here the impression is that something stood at the mountain and masses of rock merged with it, forming mountains. Then the object moved away, but the mountain remained. With a small mountain to the right, the same picture. And what kind of object was here? Or here? And these are the Ziguli Mountains. Scientists from the Samara Non-Governmental Research Organization Avesta have been studying anomalous phenomena that are regularly observed in the vicinity of the Ziguli Mountains for about 30 years. But that's not what matters to us. To date scientists have already collected many confirmations of the hypothesis, the essence of which is that the steep bend located in the middle reaches of the Volga, and called the Samara Luka is a product of engineering activity. But who could have done all this? Let me remind you, according to the official version of history, at that time there were only monkeys, which of course is completely absurd. Here is what the prize winner of the scientific organization of Vesta, engineer Igor Pavlovich says about this. Have you ever thought about such a geographical riddle why did the Volga River in its middle course suddenly need to circle around a small, only some hundred kilometers long Ziguli mountain range? It would seem that river waters in accordance with the laws of physics, instead of creating this kind of loops, should shorten their path and head east of the Ziguli along the places where the UC River bed now runs. Igor Pavlovich's words were commented by Associate Professor of Samara Aerospace University, Candidate of Technical Sciences and Analyst Sergei Markolov. Reading an article about the geological structure of the Volga Ural region in one of the scientific collections published by Moscow State University in 1962, I found a strange scheme in it. It depicted a section of the Earth's layers in the Samara Luka area, which turned out to be very similar to the contours of a giant capacitor. Everyone will easily remember from a school physics course how this electrical device works and electric charge accumulates between metal plates arranged in parallel and its magnitude is limited only by the breakdown strength of the gasket between the plates. 
and there are hundreds, if not thousands of such mountains all over the earth. This proves once again that in ancient times there was a civilization on earth that could not only mine and process stone, but also artificially create entire mountains. And the people who represented that civilization were much larger than us. Modern science is well aware of this, but it is not profitable for it to change established hypotheses for centuries and officially declare it.